give a little preview of this one earlier, so I could pretty much say the same except for adding a color to it. Yeah, so this is based on our um, pay for fuel center, which we keep on Google Drive. Um, so like at the top we have the retail price today, which is in fact yesterday, uh, petrol and diesel. Um, and then the arrows indicate whether it's up relative to last week or down relative to last week. And it's the same for the wholesale price, which is what commonly called the flats price, which is if you were to buy um, a bottle load of petrol, how much would it cost? Uh, uh, and then we have the proportion of tax that is, um, proportion of uh, retail cost that is tax and the proportion of diesel cost that is tax. And these scales are the historic minimum and the historic maximum. So once it hits the once it um, hits the top, the top extends along, and then we have uh, diesel petrol whole retail, and then diesel petrol uh, wholesale over time. So that's the first basis, and this is all done in um, flex downwards in our market. So um, to split the work up, we've um, just made different dashboards and proposed all the same. We get back to the office and ask for some money for a computer screen, and actually think about the. Uh, the layout will we'll combine the, uh, a lot of them, but at the moment it's in, in bits. So that's the first one. So we originally set out obviously to make eight, well, time conspired against us. We managed to make five, but the rest of the dashboard is about to show you is basically completely on open data. This is based on the ONS of components of RPI. So you get, you know, on the, it's always the middle of the month. There's a news report about what CPI is done. On the same day, RPI, uh, they publish the RPI statistics. And that has the components going down. So it has the insurance change for all the different types of things that people buy. So what we do is we take and monitor the um, ones related to transport. So um, in the last 10 years, uh, the cost of motoring has gone up by uh, 25%. But if you uh, look at the overall cost of motoring, the thing that pulls it down is that with vehicle purchase, cars are getting ever cheaper uh, to buy. So in the last uh, 10 years, they've gone down by 14%. Um, and then vehicle, vehicle maintenance, probably because cars are getting increasingly complex, vehicle maintenance, the price has gone up 40% uh, in the last 10 years. And then these are, um, that's bus and coach, that's rail, that's cost of living, so that's overall inflation. Uh, that's cost of motoring, that one. And then there's wages as well, that one's wages. So um, we tend to keep an eye on those generally. People say that the motoring costs are going up, and they don't really mean that, because motoring costs are essentially flat. Um, but what it, they do mean is that the day-to-day -day costs do go up quite sharply, but they're always pulled down by the uh, declining cost of um, buying the cars in the first place. The next dashboard, uh, we looked at uh, Stats 19. And um, what we wanted to do is create some sort of live feeling um, dashboard out of Stat 17. But because we only have 2015 complete, um, we, we decided that what we'll do is we'll compare um, what had happened up to this day a year ago. So it's a bit small, but actually. Underneath here, we actually have the time and the day are uh, exactly one year ago to, to the actual time as well. Down to the second. Down, down to the second. People we don't do things half half of it. Down to the second. And uh, once we've got that, we can we figured out how many times it had been up until that point. And this will refresh. And so um, you know, tomorrow, if someone got injured on the road, it will increase, and we've used standard road safety definitions. We've got killed at the top in the purple, 
and we split that into casualties aged less than 18 and casualties aged over 70, so 70 and over, I should say. We have the same type of thing, but for killed or seriously, killed or seriously injured uh, casualties. And at the bottom, this is the, the fatalities just grafted out per day up until today, a year ago. So yeah, it's completely using the stats on the team, which is, again, open data. Okay, next one. Okay, this is not the most interesting or attractive <laughs> 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 This is the most So um, I was looking for um, some live data I wanted to do. Um, it would be the state of the SRN every 15 minutes. Um, and uh, in some kind of some kind of sort of live metric, um, I've been shown lots of really interesting uh, historic uh, data about um, the highways network that I'm going to go back and do more work on. But I was just looking for something simple and quick. Um, and um, so this is really the most hacky of the pages. Um, so it takes the uh, the XML feed for um, what they call unplanned events, and then it it essentially divides up the text because it's sort of human readable uh, uh, news alerts, divides up the text and isolates the time delay phrase in each of the statements and then turns those into numbers and adds them up. I'm not entirely pleased with how it handles delays of more than an hour, but luckily there aren't really that many significant delays of more than an hour at the moment. So that needs some refinement, but that's the sum of the delay in each event currently on the network. So that changes. It was, it and was a lot higher earlier. It was a lot higher earlier. So uh, 300 minutes? Yeah, so if it goes above 200 minutes, which is an admittedly arbitrary number, um, it, it turns sort of reddish. But uh, we weren't sure what, what number we should set it at. But the back end of that is much more interesting than the front end. <laughs> <laughs> and similarly, the back end of so this dashboard is also more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's the itself. But it, it, you know, it gives us a really, really reassuring, perhaps, uh, statement <laughs> saying zero mile under flood risk. But what this dashboard set out to do is to have a look at the length of road which is under flood and flood risk. It's pretty much said for itself. Um, and we used um, open map roads to four roads, and we found on the environmental agency's uh, website a map of, uh, a sort of shape file of where they give warnings for flood. Um, and we can feed that in as an API, which is done, and that obviously updates every 15 minutes. And what we've done is we've calculated the number of the length of road within those flood risk areas, and every 15 minutes, uh, when the environmental agency, environmental agency API updates, it will calculate how many miles are under flood risk. Well, right now we're zero, and throughout the day it's been zero. Uh, <laughs> perhaps when it rains it might go up, but that will be the true test. But it does work, we put it to work. Um, again, the, the back end of this was, was much more interesting and much more time consuming because we set up um, some GIS work and it literally took all day to run. It only finished running about 20 minutes ago. So yeah, that's our pieces of our dashboard. The idea is to add a couple bit more and then we'll have one big data policy dashboard all to promote the use of open data. Fantastic. This dashboard, uh, we will be putting it on the web so anyone can show it anywhere. Uh, we, I, I, I have to check. I, I would love to, yeah. but, but it's one of those things that I have to check. That wouldn't be great if you had your foyer and England's foyer. Yeah, I mean, the, the original basis of this is that I went to visit ORR, and I don't know if anyone who's been to ORR, but so it's that? the Office of Road and Rail, which oh, used to be the Office of Rail Regulation. So everything is kitted out with like train stuff. Like there are pictures of trains and, and it's all very training. Uh, <laughs> and, and there's and there's these, these boards that are filled with like train information. And then it became the office of rail and road, and someone has clearly gone, oh god, we need to get some road stuff quickly. 
screens and they replaced it with one of those really bland images of a motorway, you know, with a light trail, you know, sort of like background, end of the PowerPoint presentation type thing. Well, that's not what they should really be after because they should be thinking as much about rail as they should be thinking about road. So yeah. that's the original basis. Yeah. Well, next time I'm in there, I'll give them to the top kingdom on there because that's at least a bit more dynamic. It was, it was, it was, this was early days, but it was just a bit, well, it was a bit sad. Yeah. But yeah, there's lots of sort of training type of stuff in that building. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of this is based off open data, so yeah. you know, full festival at least, so I you know, should be able to. Right. Uh, any other questions? No? No? What tools have you used to put this together? Uh, it's um, the Flex, da Flex dashboard package in R, um, and then uh, the uh, working out the miles of road that were in flood risk. Uh, the underlying work is in QGIS, but that's only one. That's only once, yeah. and that file is used in R. So it's all, it's all R. Wow. Excellent. Any other questions? questions? Just from space, really, was thinking that the delay index, the frame of flood one, that obviously the involved challenge would be to try and take the number of minutes of delay and the likely number of vehicles affected. Oh, yeah, 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 that would be. That's that was that was like that. Yeah, they're, they're, this isn't going to be the final draft. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go back and, and add some yeah. add, add some things in. Because this is a work process. Man. Yeah, so we we used open map roads, but we've got um, a shape file at work that we paid for this. The average annual daily flow, uh, uh, map range with average daily flow, which we could then do the same thing and then solve the the, yeah. the vehicle miles travel. Um, that's, still, that's, that's still cool, but we just we literally had like five minutes left. It's a mix of SRM data and on-road data. So Our response to that is the public don't know the difference, nor should they have to care. Can't. But how complicated would it be to make it all-road data for all your dashboard measures? Oh, it's it's, right. it's easier to do all road data. Yeah. It's it's the, the it's simpler to do all rather than SRM, um, with the exception of the the, um, the delay. Um, the others are all far simpler to do everything rather than SRM. Yeah. Uh, the other the, the, the yeah it, the SRM delay one is the only one that really has to be SRM specific, and the others that the idea of slicing it by SRM only is is harder rather than that. But it's still good. It's still good. Yeah, it's still good. It's still good. It's still good. No more questions? Fantastic. <laughs>